I talk now. Talk one now. call, one call, tell me you see me late. See me late. I ain't really worried about no motherfucking hate. No, no, no. I'm just really stacking cheese, I'm just stacking paper. Stacking paper. Kicked up in the field, can't you tell my patient? Got sending at your time, yeah, so I'm We up, we up. On Gotta keep elevating. Elevate. Got the rack stacked up. Yeah, I'm hella cake. Tell me what you're saying. Yeah, I get that. Because, you know. Um, you, to me, are one of the most interesting people, man. You know, you got from, you know, being a photographer to uh, you doing films and also mixed martial arts. I mean, let's dive in to get to know you for, you know, my audience because I've been promoting this out and a lot of them want to know, you know, more about you because most of them have a hard time just doing one profession. And it's like you're doing three. Plus, I'm pretty sure you got some stuff that I don't even know about just yet. So let's dive uh, into uh, some of that, man. Okay, so... Um, from the get-go, for your viewers, uh, my name is Alfred Graham. I'm actually the third. My father is a junior, and my grandfather is the original. Uh, I'm 25. I graduated from Western class of 2013. Now, like most people, like most people from uh, Western, they want to go into the military, a good chunk of them, even if that ain't what they originally wanted. Uh, I wanted to go into the military. Unfortunately, uh, it was about a month and some change before I actually graduated. So I had my contract. I had my ship out date. I was ready to go. But instead of being able to ship out a month, a month and a half before we graduated, mm -hmm. I ended up having a seizure out of nowhere. Now, I've had a total of three seizures in my life. Uh, once when I was like an infant, once when I was like four years old, and then, of course, the one my senior year of high school, which disqualified me. Now, they told me five years down the road, I could sit there and retry and uh, become uh, enlisted that way again if I ain't had no outbursts or anything like that. But at 18 years old, the only thing you wanted to do was serve in the military and then it basically being taken away from you. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, I pissed and moaned around my mom's house for, uh, shit, probably three solid months. I worked a factory job. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, but in the process of all of this, I was consuming large amounts of movies, uh, large amounts of films. I mean, I was watching your B-list films. I was watching like your Oscar films. I was watching stuff off YouTube and not so much to, uh, where I'm at now, literally today, all I do is just nonstop consume film. If it's something I've seen, I'll watch it again. If it's something I haven't seen. Uh, but back then I was just watching it and I didn't realize it was a coping mechanism for me. Mm -hmm. um, because when I was upset, because I was reminded of, oh, I couldn't serve. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I sat there and would just watch a movie. And I realized it was like a drug for me. My, my personality, my emotions would change rapidly. And uh, it was shortly, shortly near the end of 2013, I wanted, I, I fully decided, you know what, movies is where it's at. I want to make a movie. I knew nothing about what the mm -hmm. filmmaking process at all. Didn't have a camera, didn't have no audio gear, didn't have, I mean, like, all I knew was, and I was like, well, shit, I, I don't have, um, I don't have the time to sit there and, or not the time, but I don't have the, the, the finances to make a hundred million dollar movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me figure some of this stuff out. So I sat there and I dove in like how I dove in with just watching movies in general. I dove in with the screenwriting process. I dove in with uh, like frame rates, understanding why certain films are shot in 24, some are shot in 25. Uh, and then after that, I started picking together movies and really deconstructing it. And then I was like, OK, well, I sort of understand this. Let me buy a camera. So I went to the local Walmart, bought a cheap $300 Sony uh, DCSH 300. It's like a $250 camera back then. And I, I bought a cheap little memory card, stuck it in there. Uh, this camera, instead of actual camera batteries, ran off of AA batteries. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, time to start making movies. Next thing I know, there was nothing in there at all that was usable. 
Uh, I had like a three minute time record limit on the camera. Uh, uh, everything was like really, really dark. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, damn, how do I like, even if I was like highlighting, cause I wanted to do um, interviews at first, just to like really understand how everything worked with the camera. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yo, I'm, I'm not understanding why none of this is happening. So I did more research into it and I found that's how I learned about Aperture. Uh, which for your listeners, if you don't know what aperture is, mm-hmm. it's where the lens itself is letting in as much light or as little light as the lens itself can handle. So imagine like this here is the camera lens in whole. If mm-hmm. I'm opening up the lens, this is as wide as it goes. So a lot of light can go in. Mm-hmm. If you close off your aperture, you're actually smaller, uh, making the hole smaller, which mm-hmm. is allowing less light to come in, which of course is allowing uh the subject that you're shooting to not be properly lit now of course you can work around that with like your shutter speed and stuff like that and we'll get into that later probably but for a two almost 300 dollar camera you're not getting none of that function whatsoever and i was like i understand man (laughs) uh so i was uh starting out i was like okay well i need to take a step back I need to figure out uh, what makes a certain image work because the actual scientific name for film is motion pictures. So I was like, well, if I can make a single frame pop, I should be able to make a whole series of frames and a little skit film thing pop and look really good. Or at least that was the attitude I had. And that's actually what started my path towards photography I never wanted to do photography, never had any interest in photography. It was, well, I need to figure out how to make all these images look good. But in order to do that, I had to figure out how to make one image look good. And that's crazy to me because, like, when I first met you, I'm seeing, you you know, we talked. um, I think we was going to Charlie, was hanging out with Charlie for his birthday. And you tell me you're you're a photographer and you're working on films and stuff. And I was seeing some of your work and you make like some amazing pictures. That's why it's, it's blows me away for you to be like, man, I even want to be a photographer, <laughs> but like you take some great pictures, man. I, uh, I really appreciate that. Um, photography, like I said, was not an interest I wanted. And it's slowly uh, for a long time, uh, as you'll figure out here in a little bit, when I fully discuss it, it sort of encompassed my life to where it was where I was making a living off of it. And I, I actually put film on the back burner for a really long time 